Well, the weather's finally broken in North Carolina, so I've gotten a chance to do some work on the hull and transom. Um, this video is going to be on the transom, and you can see what I've done. It's pretty much ready to paint. Um, still got a lot of work to do on the hull. Anyway, I've broken up the video into two pieces, one for the transom, which is going to be this video, and then the other one for the hull. I'm working on that one. Be warned, the video's been taking over a space of two months, so you'll see some segments with me in a coat and other segments with me in shorts and a, a light t-shirt. Um, that's just North Carolina. You don't know whether it's going to be 85 degrees one day or 40. So keep watching and you'll see how I got this transom to this point. Um, it was a mess. There was a lot of holes in it. A lot of holes. About you know, 57 odd years worth of holes. Keep watching and you'll see how I got it paint ready. The area I'm going to start tackling is getting rid of these little holes. Basically uh, I'm going to drill them out to get some fresh material. Um, bevel them a little bit and then um, fill them with epoxy. Uh, the last owner had drilled two holes in the bottom of the boat thinking it was wet foam and it wasn't. You can lift this boat with pretty much one hand so it's really light. I doubt there's much contamination if any at all at this point. Uh, but I'll fill those in and uh, these will get beveled out and um, glassed in with a glass cap over them as well. But for now we'll drill them out and, um, and uh, get an epoxy fill in there. The first thing I'm going to do is drill them out. And this is a perfect drill bit because it's a little bit bigger than the hull itself. And um, I'm going to bevel it. And again, the last owner had drilled these. Basically, he thought there was waterlogged foam. I don't think there was, but he drilled these to drain it somehow or the other. And uh, Not a big deal. Now, the reason I'm beveling it, and I have a video that shows um, why I'm beveling it, because it's creating um, a wider opening on the bottom part of the hole and that way um, that way the uh, the fill won't be able to come out it'll uh, it'll be pushing up against the bevel all right so I'm gonna go ahead and fill those holes uh, that we made I'm using the uh, total boat epoxy resin uh, I've got the uh, the slow hardener and basically one pump of each gives you the right proportions let's uh, go with one pump and one pump. What I'm going to do with this one though, this one will lock down so I'll give it one pump and twist it and let it drip everywhere like it usually does. Then I'll mix this in. I'm probably going to end up needing two. So actually let me go ahead and do that. I'm just preemptively make two. I don't like wasting any but it sucks when you have to go back in the middle of something to mix some more up. Yeah, every time you twist this, it'll drip some more out, so just get the last bit of that. It's like Maxwell House, get to the last drop. Alright, so I am going to add a little bit of mill glass as a thickener. This does give it a little bit more structural integrity and uh, strength, so when we fill in those holes, um, there'll be some substance in, uh, inside of them. You could use polyester resin, but epoxy resin um, has a lot more structural integrity. Or strength than the uh, polyester resin. The polyester resin relies on the uh, the fibers of the glass. Um, the epoxy resin just has a, its own strength already built into it. All right, so let me take this over there and uh, start filling in those holes. So I am using a syringe. Gives you a little bit more control over putting the epoxy in there. And um, I'm going to start with these holes. I already got them drilled out. Got a bevel uh, ground into it, and I want to make sure these things have as much strength as possible. Now, I'll probably end up grinding this down some more and laying a little, few small layers of glass over it before I ferret. Now, here for the fun part, you're probably going to think I'm absolutely insane, but there is a method to my madness here. And this is why I say you're going to think I'm insane. I'll start with this one because it may drip down to the lower one. <laughs> That's the insanity. 
and the reason for that is I don't want it leaking out of the hole. It's going to stick to it, but it doesn't matter. It's going to grind off. And um, when I'm done with this and I fair, you won't, there won't be any tape left, even though it's probably sticking to it now. All right. Quick tip. This is going in the garbage. Um, leave the stick in your cup and whatever epoxy is in the bottom, it'll harden. And you can use a stick to pull the epoxy right out and reuse the, uh, the mixing cup. And uh, that's it for now. We're going to let all this stuff cure and um, come back tomorrow, see what it looks like. And um, I don't know if we'll, we'll be able to do any more glass work because um, I think after tomorrow it's supposed to go back into the 30s and 40s. But uh, for now, I'm glad I got a head start on this. So here's the transom. I used the tape to uh, hold the epoxy in. I didn't think it would stick, but uh, I was mistaken. It is actually stuck pretty well. Um, I'm going to grind this all off. I'm not really worried about um, the amines on the epoxy right now. <laughs> Most of this is going to be ground off. There's going to be some more repair work done. And at that point, I will, uh, you know, at that point, I'll actually wash any, any repairs that I've done with epoxy, which will be essentially all of them, and um, get all the amines off. So that way we can uh, get going with getting a two part epoxy uh, um, primer on here. And um, then it'll be a two part polyurethane over that. Still haven't decided whether I'm going to spray or uh, roll and tip. All right, so that's the preliminary sanding, and um, I guess you'd call it beveling. I'm going to do after this is uh, before I do anything else. Um, get straight edges and see where these these bevels or these uh, dips um, how deep they are and see, make sure that there's enough um, room for fiberglass anyway um, stay tuned all right so I've got some initial sanding done um, I've gone back and patched this in a little bit and what I'm gonna do now is uh, get to sand it down and create some divots in here and then glass these holes over with a small fiberglass patch uh, with the epoxy resin uh, just to hold everything in place. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Let me show you exactly what I've done and why. So it looks like I've made a mess of it, but the reality is um, everywhere that there's been a hole, but what I'm doing is um, basically creating a divot in there so that I can um, put fiberglass over it and uh, whatever patch I uh, have in there is going to be held uh, in there with the fiberglass patch so you can see all these uh, all these areas so it's prepped I'm going to wipe it down with acetone and get ready to put some fiberglass over it um, the holes that didn't patch up I think I'm going to put some marine tex in there um, we'll see let me uh, play this by ear all right, so I'm ready to patch this in. I've got some uh, strips of 1708 by actual cloth, which is uh, really good for this. Um, we're going to go smooth surface out, of course. We've got total boat epoxy, uh, resin, and uh, slow hardener. Now, the one thing with epoxy resin, it, uh, it does take a while to soak through. Polyester resin soaks through the glass a lot faster, but that's okay. And that's another reason I'm using 1708. It's sewn. Uh, there's no esters in there, or there's no binders for the chopped strand, which would uh, basically epoxy has to really, really soak in to, to saturate that. So what I'm doing is applying the patches over the plugs we've put in. The um, basic concept is you wet it down with epoxy, uh, put the fiberglass patch over it, um, roll it in, uh, make sure it's fully saturated. Uh, once that's done, um, basically we're going to let it cure. 
and um, go on to uh, grinding it down so that the uh, level of the uh, patch itself is below the gel coat. I want to leave some room for fairing compound, and uh, you'll see me start doing this in a second. Uh, probably 1708 was a little bit too thick, but eh, it is what it is, and I still got some patch material left over the plug, so I'm pretty happy with the way this turn this is turning out. Anyway, I'm going to start the fairing, and uh, I've got a total boat, total fair, love this stuff. Did the interior of the boat with it, and yeah, I do have a, a saran wrap on it, um, because I had it stored over the winter, so didn't want it to uh, deteriorate. Oh well, so much for that saran wrap. And uh, I'm going to use a piece of cardboard to do the mixing on. I've got these... Uh, tongue depressors and what I love about this stuff is that it's equal parts which can be a challenge doing it visually so I'm probably not going to get enough in the first go but that's all right that's pretty close Because that's alright, I'll just mix up some more. And I like doing this stuff on cardboard because, uh, quite frankly, it's just easier to throw it away when you're done. So you want to mix this stuff up. Blue and the yellow so it's a nice putrid baby shit green. What's the cure time on that? Uh, it's like 24 hours. Uh, I mean, it's, it'll get hard to the touch before that. But yeah, but the, few, the full cure isn't. Yeah. Now, one thing you can count on for certain when using a fairing compound is that you'll either not mix up enough or you'll mix up way too much. It's almost a given. But that's part of the fun I guess. <laughs> and this is why it sometimes takes several coats. You get complex shapes like this and you have to sand in between the coats. And I'm just going to leave that. I'll let it dry. I'll sand it down. It should be all right. All right. This is as done as it's going to get right now. It's the first coat. Feeling good. Weather's good. It's spring. Um, I hope to have this thing painted within the month. So we got some more glass work to do. But uh, right now, I'm concentrating on the uh, transom. And what I'm going to do next is, uh, once this cures, I'm going to sand it down and go over with another another coat of uh, fair and compound and fill in all the holes, and it'll be ready for paint. <laughs> got another layer of fairing compound on here you missed that you blinked anyway let me show you what that looks like um, so this should be hopefully the final layer I'm actually going to use an old-school uh, long sander normally you'd use a long board but I'm lazy so I want to get this done um, with a minimal amount of effort as possible so I'm using this the reason I'm using this though is that it's going to help me keep to the contour of the transom as I uh, 
as I sand it. So let me go ahead and get started with that. I've got the uh, two layers of um, Farron compound sanded and uh, let me show you a little trick. I came out here last night with a flashlight just to find any minor defects that needed fixing. I'll show you how I did that. It's daylight, it works better at night, but I can definitely show you how, that, how I did that. Basically what I did is I armed myself with a flashlight and a magic marker and I went through and basically just hit the light so I can find shadows and what you'll see is that areas that might need fixing are definitely highlighted minor blemishes but might as well knock them out all the way and the uh, the light will help uh, identify those spots so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mix up some farin compound just to touch up those spots after that a light sanding and uh, we'll be good to go we're ready to go I'm not going to mix up a whole lot. I don't think we really need much. Well, that last bit of uh, farin compound I put on is dried, so I'm going to sand it down. I've actually switched over to a different sander. I've got this uh, this rigid sander, and the main reason is that you can dial down the speed. I don't want to remove a lot of this. I just want to blend it into the rest of the uh, the transom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and um, hopefully at this point we'll be done and ready for paint for the transom. Not for the rest of the hole, unfortunately, but yeah, a little bit at a time. This transom is about as ready as it's going to be for painting, so I'm going to go on and start working on the rest of the hull. Got some uh, major damage that needs to be repaired. Um, bear with me and uh, look out for the next video, which will be on the um, major damage uh, areas. Um, I actually been working on both of these simultaneously, but I decided to split up the videos because it just made more sense. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, if you did, hit like. Don't forget to share, and definitely don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. See you in the next go around. Thanks.